this time I switch in English because we have our first speaker, which uh, is uh, Alexander Danzis, is the managing director of European Plastic Converters. He's based in Brussels. And uh, the theme of his uh, presentation today is, Europe, uh, is the, the European Union Plastics Agenda, which is our future. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, first of all, let me thank the uh, Hellenic Plastics Industries Association for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Um, I would like also to all those which are producing in Greece and not yet members of this association, please do so. Because the future of your industry is at stake. And my presentation today will be about this. I will talk about the agenda of the European Commission and trying to indicate how far we can gain control again of that agenda in order to secure our future. This is a picture I took two weeks ago in Holland in the train station. For all investors, it's a very nice message. This is very important. If companies now looking for investing get their banks financing alternatives to plastic packaging, if you have international renowned foundations like the Ellen MacArthur Foundation saying that they want to reduce by 50% plastics packaging in this world, I think we have a serious issue. So, coming back to the core of my presentation, I will really try to stick to the timeline of 15 minutes, although it will be extremely challenging. Um, some words about the plastics industry, but you know all of that. The plastic strategy, I want to say a few words. I have a couple of slides, but you will have them. I want really to touch on the single-use plastics, because I think this is the most important point right now. Uh, and I want to give you some updates on what happened two days ago in the European Parliament, which is again making things a bit more complicated than we thought. Some words on the tax on plastics, which is still not a way, and then some conclusions and messages. Okay, this is the plastics family. If we want the circular economy for plastics to become a reality, it's evident we all have to work together. We all have to stimulate more innovation. We all have to get more involved in collecting also more of our waste. And I think this is where the major challenge is for the future. We were not involved enough also in collecting some of our plastics products. Hence, also, not enough plastics recovery, recycling activities took place, and the whole notion of marine litter hanging above in the clouds uh, on the planet. So it's very important, I think, to, to make the circular economy for plastics a reality. Recyclers, polymer suppliers, and converters, which are there to create new markets for these recycled products. Circular economy, just to highlight, there are regulatory initiatives which are having an impact on our activities and there are non-legislative activities. The whole plastic strategy is today still a non-legislative activity. So it's more like a strategy for the future, but it gives you clear signals where legislation will go in the future. The single-use plastics directive is really a piece of legislation which will have a short-term impact. When I say short-term, it's two, three, four years. But it means that your companies have to take decisions now about what is happening. Okay, the background to the plastic strategy, I think I will, I will skip, you all know these. This is an important one, and I think it's not used enough. It's a study in the US, Trucost um, consultant, who actually calculated what the environmental cost will be for society globally if we were moving away from plastics and going for alternative materials. You see the immense environmental cost for society. And politicians need to be aware of this. We need to bring these messages forward. 
some good points about the plastic strategy because when it was published in January, I was not so worried, let me be clear, because we cannot be against these, these statements. Make recycling profitable for business, yes, we can live with that. Curb plastics waste, yes, we can live with that. Drive investment and innovation, who can be against it? Stop littering at sea, the same. Spur change across the world, this is where, of course, the Europeans always want to champion the rest of the world. We all know that the biggest pollution is not in Europe, but in other major countries, Asia, Latin America, and name it. This is where no proper waste management infrastructures have been put in place, but the consumption of plastic per capita has increased tremendously. Now, whose responsibility is that? And I think this is one of the main major challenges for the global activity. Some further details um, on the plastic strategy. Of course, the whole revision of the packaging and packaging waste is taking place and will continue to take place with higher recycling targets. I have to say, I, I came here to speak, I think, five or six years ago. John, where is John? Uh, he invited me to speak at that time. And I was already highlighting how important recycling was. Uh, five, six years ago, and I don't see really things have moved forward in Greece on plastics recycling. So in that respect, with the current knowledge I have, I have to be a little bit disappointed uh, because already five years passed and things could have been done, I think, in a, in a better way when it comes to recycling and recycling targets for plastics in particular. Very important, of course, is the food contact legislation, which is still pending where the authorization are not yet being finalized and where the European authorities have promised us, and they are promising since a long time, that by the end of this year they will come out with the final recommendation and things should be uh, published. Let's hope this will uh, be achieved. Again, NGOs now are starting to be concerned about the use of recycled material in food contact applications and NGOs had had the wind in the back for the last couple of years in Brussels. So they have been very powerful in putting, thanks to the marine litter debate, the plastics, waste and health issues on the agenda of politicians. Today for me it's easy to talk to you because you all are part of the plastic family. Most of the speeches I give, I have an audience of 100 people trying to get rid of plastics. And that is more difficult. And that population, I can tell you, is growing day by day. So we need to go out there and talk about the benefits and the actions that we really care for and want to do. Compostable, biodegradable, I think it's also a good thing to work with LCAs uh, in the future, agreed LCAs, if possible on the European level, which will clarify quite a lot. Restrict the use of OXO, I said it five, six years ago, at this event, we should stop using this. Okay, now we are going through the regulatory process to ban these kind of materials, which I think makes perfectly sense. Okay, this one I will, no, I will not skip it. Uh, the most important part in this one is the pledging campaign. The pledging campaign where the European Commission has asked any organization involved in the plastics industry as a user, producer, recycler, converter, to come forward with pledges. They want to collect 10 million tons, or no, they want to create a market for 10 million tons of recycled plastics by the year 2025. I doubt, I have strong doubts they will reach that number, although we all have to make sure that we reach the amount necessary to convince the public that we really are serious about recycling. This is, I think, a major challenge. So if, if we reach 5 million, 6 million tons in Europe, I think the Commission will accept. 10 million, I, I personally don't believe, but it's the, the spirit of moving away from collected for recycling targets to recycled volumes, which is the game changer, and where I think we will have to be a little bit more aggressive in using recycled polymers in many new applications, or even current applications. Okay, we all agree that we have to work on the standards, more harmonization, and new guidelines for separate collection and sorting of waste, including plastics. I think we can't ignore this. We have to work on these 
activities. The eco-modulation of the EPR schemes is all related to the design of the product. What is recyclable, what is not recyclable. This is a very important theme. And I think we need as an industry to unite behind one definition of recyclable and not leave it to others to define what is recyclable. Okay, the horizontal issues I will skip in order to, waste some, to get some time. Industry's role, it was highlighted when the, um, the strategy was published in January. Uh, for months before that publication, we had been negotiating with the European Commission the voluntary initiatives of the European Commission. I know Giuseppe is going to talk about the, uh, the Plastic Zero Voluntary Commitment. We also had several, several other initiatives which are trying to pave the way for the future. All of that now, I think, is, is brought together and uniting again the industry with clear voluntary actions. Uh, and I can tell you there is um, going to be a meeting on the 11th of December where all these organizations, platforms involved in committing towards the goals of the plastic strategy on a voluntary basis will report what they have done for the last 12 months since the signature of these voluntary commitments. You will also notice that in these activities there is more and more an approach per polymer type, which was also a request of the European Union. The complexity of the plastics family today makes it very difficult to look into all tiny little details of the recycling schemes. You get more and more into sorting, so handling the PT fractions, handling the polyolefin fractions, handling PVC fractions, going chemically in addition to mechanical recycling is the way forward. And I think this needs to be dealt with, and I, I call them the polymeric value chain collaborations. And I think this is very important for all of our industries to continue in this, in this route. This leads automatically to more resources. Because when you talk about circular economy, you can make the circle as big, as small as you want. Basically, it all starts in the household when the people are sorting and collecting properly and even reusing, recycling sometimes their materials. You can develop this on a bigger scale. But you, can, you should not think that you, could, you should only use one particular material from one product back in the same product. No, you should create these pools of circular materials available for different kind of products whenever you can. This for logistic reasons or for quality reasons. So this is why I'm a strong believer in, yes, there is closed product, closed loop recycling needed but there are also other kind of activities needed to use these kind of materials. You can easily see a PET bottle ending up either in a fleece or ending up even in a car part, as long as the material is being reused from a circular point of view. Okay, these are statements I will not really comment on. Uh, just to say that we are developing now this reporting format, again, to come to the uh, 10 million tons and to contribute. There will be more and more demand to report about what we are doing, and specifically as converters. I'm, I'm asking now the plastics converters to be a little bit more vigilant and to be a little bit more transparent in the use of the recycled uh, plastics um, to report on. Important is that whilst we were negotiating this with the European Commission, we were asking also for regulatory security, because we need regulations as well. A full implementation of all EU waste directives in the European Union by 2030. These are the things which are acceptable, of course, but needs to be handled at a national level. Because if we continue to take countries to court for 10, 15 years because they don't implement European laws, we will not make progress. This country is an example of this. EU internal market, also extremely difficult, because if we see now, and that's going to be the next part of my presentation, the single use is giving a fragmentation of the European market and not an internal market protection. So this is also a very deli delicate issue. Okay, the other point I think in this I addressed already. Coming to the single use, you know this chart, you know the list, the top 10. It basically came from the collection of data from beach cleanups. NGOs have power, they have studied, they have analyzed. The parts in red I have highlighted here are basically, for those who have read the study, um, are basically the parts which you find in the Mediterranean area. So this is basically the uh, single-use plastics most find items on Greek beaches, as you say. 
The other is less, less important. You should really look into that study. I'm not saying I'm supporting the study or the results of it because I'm appealed to um, believe that you can use this kind of studies to define a product and to target a product. So I don't like the term single-use plastics as such. I would have preferred to see something like a regulation on anti-littering measures. This is something I would have liked to see far more than to target one single-use plastics application. And why a regulation? Because a regulation applies to everybody at the same level in all member states. We are talking here about anti-littering measures. We should not be talking about banning products. This is my message, at least, when I talk to politicians in Brussels. The directive, the proposed directive, is still a proposal, but it's going through now the legal frame, and the legal frame is extremely complex, extremely long, and highly, highly political. And so far, only the environmental ministers have been involved in that process. And as happens in the European Commission, it also happens in member states. Authorities are working in silos, they are not working together meaning that the environmental ministers have been far more active than the industry or the economic ministers. And this is where we have to come in. We all should stand up and make sure that the industry ministers are aware about the impact of these measures. So the proposed directors foresee different regulatory actions, restrictions or ban. So they want to ban definitely certain products. They want the EPR schemes aimed at covering costs of marine litter by the producers. So EPR schemes should bear all the cleanup costs. Deposit schemes only for beverage uh, bottles, labeling requirements and awareness uh, campaigns. The one more minute. Okay, I will, I will, I'll take two. This is where we stand now, and I can tell you that the Environment Committee has even made the thing more complex, because they agreed to add polystyrene food and drink containers, very light plastic bags, and products made of oxidegradable plastics to the list of the banned items. And they also agreed to make it mandatory to add 35% of recycled plastics by 2025 to introduce collection and recycling for fishing gear as well. So this is making things even much more complex. Now, if you look to the end, the green part in the text, we are now moving from a single-use plastic directive to a single-use per-person consumption pattern. If you look carefully into this definition, it would mean that an ice cream into one single pot would no longer be placed on the market in the future. So it is becoming extremely, extremely complex. Okay, I will skip that. This is an important chart because it highlights member states are starting to wake up slowly but steadily. And I would like the Greek authorities also to wake up in that respect and to start raising their concerns on this. You have a few countries which are ready to support the initiatives and others which are starting to raise concerns my objective would be that we would try to block the evolution of this file as far as possible before the elections. Our position, I don't have to go to it, I think you will all understand our position. This is also an interesting one, the plastic tax. We need unanimity at member states level to get this true, but please, stop it through member states level. If no country is going to block it, this is going to go through because the EU wants their own budget in order to secure the Brexit negotiation right now. This is a very interesting slide, but I will skip it. This one as well. My key messages, key messages for public authorities, but I'm not sure there are any in the room, so I will skip that one. For industry, it's clear we have to do more. We have to do more than what we have been doing so far. And I think we have to do it fast if we want to secure our future. So the future of the plastics industry is ours to create, not somebody else. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I want to ask you uh, a political question. After May um, 2019, we have Euro elections. And a lot of people in the Commission uh, uh, are going to change. Do you think there will be a change in the attitude of the Commission or whatever is going to be voted will be voted 
and followed by any, any future administration. Thank you. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, if you remember, the change of the Commission um, also modified the EU circular economy package five years ago. So um, a change at Commission level means also potential changes. It doesn't mean that the policy as such will continue. Um, I'm not saying that that will happen, but it's certainly an option. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Kakulidis. As far as you have understood up to now, is it clearly specified if single-use plastics include food containers as uh, yogurt cups or uh, cheese uh, buckets? Today I have no clear answer to that. You should, you should get copies of the slides where you have the, the, the new definitions proposed in the European Parliament. Um, if, if yogurt cups are being sold today in multiple packs, multiple packs, then they are not in. Uh, 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 let's say that uh, uh, one liter package is considered a single use. If it's if it's a one person, yes. So you see you see the craziness of this thing, and 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 in in one way, it, this can be challenged legally. I'm convinced because the interpretation is extremely, you know, biased. What is what is a short time span. Is a short time span of consumption five minutes, five days? What is a short time span? What is the portion of one person? So, so I, I'm not so... This is what the NGOs don't like because, because these open doors for interpretation. So the complexity there is, is, could be seen as a positive thing because I don't think it will go through. But you never know. You never know in political compromises how these things can go through. When, when, when the whole banning on, on lightweight carrier bags was, was voted, I was involved in that process, and, and we were the ones, you can blame me or not, but we were the ones presenting the 50 microns as a ceiling of thickness. Today, with single use, we have nothing under control. There are coming ideas from everywhere. So, uh, to come back to clarify a little bit more, so from your experience, uh, a positive action from uh, the converters or the plastics association is to specify uh, exactly what it is included or not, or to leave it vague? Today, today you just have to follow what will be the end of the negotiation. Uh, uh, what, what we have to uh, fight for? What is the, your opinion on that? We have to, sp to, to include specific um, characterizations or leave it vague? My opinion is that it's, it, there will be, after the, after the carrier bag, there will be another product which will be banned. Although I am completely, and I will do all my efforts not to have any banning of any product, even a straw, you know. Uh, but there are some countries now already starting to even question that. Uh, and that, I think it's a good thing. At the end of the day, we may have to give up another product, but it should be the least possible. And every interpretation which gets closer to food packaging, we should definitely stop. And, and, and the thing about the food trays with, with fresh food and fresh, uh, you know, um, vegetables and so on, this is a very dangerous precedent. And not only is it a dangerous precedent, also, you know, there are a lot of recycled PT trays on the market today. So this is completely against the spirit of the plastic strategy, which is asking for more recycled material. So this negotiation playing is going on right now. Uh, but we have to reduce as far as possible the potential impact of this. Okay, thank you. 
One last one, because Thank you. To keep Just to uh, extend the previous question, is there any discussions regarding sanitary and baby diapers and things like that, or is it completely out of the scope of, of this discussion, negotiation, whatever you call this? I would not say it's out of the scope. I mean, this, in some of the uh, studies there, you find them on the list of the products uh, found on beaches, so it's not out of the scope. Don't believe that is out of the scope, no. Thank you.